All right. Well, I, I guess if we're recording, let's get this ball going here. Uh, uh, welcome everybody that uh, will be speaking for us. Um, and welcome to those that are just here to, to learn more about winter recreation on the Rio Grande National Forest. My name is Greg Goodland. I'm the Rio Grande National Forest Public Affairs Officer and delighted to be here and welcome you all. Um, I haven't been around for a couple of months on these, so uh, I have a very capable VIS coordinator. Her name is Hannah Fake, and she is basically going to run the show, but I do interject in there because that's just my nature. Uh, glad to have you all aboard, and we will uh, turn it over to Hannah to let you know how we run this and what you can and can't do. Hannah, it's all yours. Welcome, awesome. everybody. Thanks, Greg. Um, so I'm Hannah. I'm the San Juan Mountains Association uh, Visitor Information Coordinator. So I work in partnership with the Rio Grande National Forest and the San Juan Mountains Association. I'm out of the Divide District Office in Del Norte. So we do this program once monthly. Today we'll have about a 45 minute program uh, followed by a question and answer period. If got questions throughout, feel free to pop them in the chat and we can ask them as we go along. Um, so speaking of chat, if you look down on the bottom, there's a little speech bubble with a chat. Um, you can open that up to message anyone in the group. You can introduce yourself, say hi, um, where you're where you're from. Um, you can message everyone or just an individual person directly by um, choosing the blue drop down there and selecting who you'd want to message. Um, and then we ask folks that they stay on mute unless they are speaking or need to ask a quick question. Um, you can leave your video on or off. That's up to you. Um, but we ask folks to stay on mute to minimize some background noise. And um, then you can always use the reactions as well when someone's speaking. So that's that little smiley face down at the bottom. It'll just pop up a little bubble um, to react to what someone's saying. Um, so before we get any further, we do have a door prize donated by the San Juan Mountains Association. And so this month we have a clean canteen water bottle. Let's see if I can get it to come in the picture and um, a book called The Wooden Canvas. It's all about arboglyphs in the area. Let's see if I can get it to come in focus. There we go. Um, so if you would like to be entered in for that drawing, um, please feel free to put your name in the chat or message me your name and I will add you into our hat for the drawing. Um, and we will announce the winner at the end. And also if you would like to stay up to date on our programming, we do send out um, e-news updates, and I'll send out emails about our upcoming forest specialist series program. So you're, if you're interested in receiving um, any of that information about what we're doing on the forest, um, feel free to drop your email um, in the chat or message me directly with it, and I will add it to our list. So with all of that out of the way, um, I would like to introduce um, Bryce. He will be talking about winter recreation on the Rio Grande National Forest. He is our Divide District trails and snow sports specialist. And then we also have a couple other guests um, from various organizations in the Valley. And we will, um, they'll all be speaking. So we have Paul Whitmore from the Upper Rio Grande Nordic Club, Suzanne Beauchene from the San Juan Nordic Club, Janelle Cuckoo from the Snow Country Explorers, Curtis Miller from the South Fork Powder Busters. So they're all gonna be sharing just a little bit about um, what they do and the trails that they help maintain on our forest for winter recreation. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Bryce. He can introduce himself a little further um, and kind of a little bit about the forest and then we'll switch over to our speakers. Yeah, so I know, um, let's see, I think, who do we have? Paul, you had something you had to get to this evening. So maybe if you just wanna jump in and share a little bit first about um, what you do up in your area. I'm, you uh, sure, I'm, I'm the president of the Upper Rear Grand Nordic Club. Um, we have three or four trails that we try to groom throughout the year. I'm sorry. Um, we groom Ivy Lime Creek Trail, which is up near Sparse City. We have a Deep Creek Trail. It's kind of on East Deep Creek Bench. And we have one called Six Mile Flats. It's kind of behind the uh, lumber mill area near Middle Creek Road in Creed, near, near Creed, and then we occasionally will groom up on Spring oh. Creek Pass at the corrals off to the east there. Um, but it takes a lot of time to do that, so we don't do it very often. Um, and right now, there's not a ton of snow up on the pass. Well, maybe after this last storm there was, but last week there wasn't a lot. And so anyway, we try to groom the trails for skiing, snowshoeing, 
um, sometimes hikers, uh, whatever they, whatever people need. And uh, we get quite a few people who do that. And occasionally we'll have a skating trail as well as classic. It depends on snow and stuff. I tried grooming six mile flats today, minimal snow conditions, uh, but there, so I thought maybe it'll blow in and we'll have a little bit of a base. But at the moment it's pretty early, like uh, early season conditions. So hope to get busy pretty soon. That's about all I would have, unless there's questions. Who, who are you with again, Paul? I, I forgot um, or didn't hear. Um, with the Upper Rio Grande Nordic Club, I'll put a little um, website and message in the chat thing if you'd like. And you could, if you want, trail flyers or maps. I'll just send me send an email to the club site. So. That's awesome, Paul. Hey, this is Ashley. Where um, would you recommend us going or where can you point us towards in order to get updates for what trails have been groomed recently or um, weather conditions, that kind of thing? For updates, um, I don't know. We don't have a, uh, we don't put it on a website per se. So um, I usually send out an email to not anybody who gives me their email address. <laughs> okay. We have about a hundred some people on our list. So if you want to uh, email me with that, with your email, I'll, uh, maybe I'll add you to the list. And that's about the best we can do at the moment. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. One, I'll say one more thing. My wife wanted to put, put a plug in for this Saturday. They have a Christmas celebration in downtown Creed. They're going to close Main Street and have the Colorado Brass Quintet from like 12 to 4. So if you're into that kind of stuff. There'll be some vendors with shopping stuff, so I'll stop there, but she wanted me to let. Okay, thank you, Paul. Bryce, are you up and working, do you think? I hope so. Yay, yep, we well, can hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. I, I exclusively use Teams and seldom use Zoom, so um, yeah, again, my, my apologies. Anyways, uh, I'm the trails and mountain sports specialist on the Divide Ranger District out of Del Norte, Colorado. Um, I started in May of 2020 and with a 900 plus thousand acre district, I still consider myself new and um, every day I'm, I'm learning more about the landscape. Um, my, my job is to um, oversee the management of multiple use trails, um, whether that's OSB or motorized single track or 50 inch, um, that's, that's within my purview. Um, on the Divide Ranger District, I've got um, a recreation staff officer that oversees the entire recreation program. And then um, we also have a developed rec specialist. And the, between the three of us, we're year round employees. And then in the summertime, we grow exponentially with seasonal help. And um, we have typically 10, 12 uh, trails folks um, that support the um, access of trail based recreation here on the district. Um, yeah, as far as winter recreation on, on the forest, um, there's an array of opportunities, um, whether it's ice fishing, ice fishing, alpine skiing, um, snowmobiling, backcountry skiing, telemark skiing, snowshoeing, um, you name it. Um, it's, it's available here on the district. And um, a lot of those opportunities that I mentioned wouldn't be possible um, if it weren't for our, our partners um, that groom our, our trails for um, cross-country skiing and snowmobiling. So it, it sounds like Paul has already introduced himself um, and we can uh, move over to, to someone else. Yeah, thanks, Bryce. I think uh, Suzanne Beauchene is here from the San Juan Nordic Club to share a little bit about what they do. She wants to go next. Hi, can you guys hear me? Awesome. 
I also have a help on here if I forget stuff. Our president, Laura Concellos and Adam Moore is also on. And so our club, I guess we've been around for, I don't know, 20 years or so. Those guys might be able to help me on that one. Um, we focus on grooming for mostly cross country skiers and set track and skate skiing up to big meadows and into the campground. And we definitely help with, we get help from Kurt's group, the Power Busters to maintain that trail for the snowmobilers because that's a very multiple use trail all the way up to the junction. And then the skiing goes off to the left and snowmobilers go off to the right. So Kurt's been helping us for years on getting that, those, that trail groomed and everything tracked out too. Um, we also groom at uh, Rock Creek. And then we also hit the Monta Vista golf course if we get snow down there. <laughs> so we have permission to go down there, which is awesome when we get snow. We also focus on um, education. So we do have a, we have a big clinic. Um, usually we've been holding at the 4UR ranch, which is awesome spot to hold it. So we have several beginning courses. Usually we have an intermediate course um, and it's a special place that, you know, ever get to ski there because it's private land you know, it's a beautiful conserved property um, we try to do some other um, fun skis we're gonna have a full moon ski this year we're gonna try to do some more pop-up events and uh, hopefully get some beginners out on the trail trying to get more people into cross-country skiing um, but obviously our biggest thing is grooming like um, Paul just said it takes a lot of effort a lot of equipment so we definitely survive on memberships Anything else we should add, Laura or Adam? I can't think of anything at the moment. Um, yeah, if you guys have questions about trails and stuff, I think Suzanne shared, or we can share the website. Um, and then we're gonna talk to Bryce about trying to make sure we can share those digitally too. I think some of our trails are on Cotrex maybe, Bryce. Mm -hmm. um, we're thinking about getting in them on the Forest Service site. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, the, um, yeah, our members are, are how we afford our grooming equipment and, um, yeah, it's just so cool to see people get out. And this year we're a little bit earlier than last year, which is awesome. We got some great snow. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking for groomers too. Yes. Good ones. <laughs> I, I would add one quick thing as a board member and a, uh, uh, skier myself is we, we also besides doing work in the winter seasons is we usually with the work we do up at Rock Creek have a fall work day that we go through and uh, nip some of the aspen shoots that are coming up through so they don't aren't in the middle of the trail and remove any trees that might have fallen down and uh, just prepare the trails for the season so there's opportunities to, to volunteer and and help us and help the Rio Grande National Forest uh, throughout the year. Well, for sharing, I think we also have, let's see, um, Janelle Cuckoo on from the Snow Country Explorers, if she wants to share a little bit about what her club does. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm Janelle Cuckoo. I'm the treasurer for the Snow Country Explorers. My husband, Bob, is the groomer. Um, we are one of 27 grooming programs in the state of Colorado, Curtis, um, uh, the South Fork Powder Busters is also one of the 27. There's a grooming program in Pagosa Springs that does a lot of work on Wolf Creek Pass and in the areas around Pagosa. And there is a program in Lake City that um, works primarily um, in Hinsdale County, although ours cross into Hinsdale County too. They, they kind of pick up a Spring Creek Pass and go towards Lake City. We're from Spring Creek Pass um, to Creed. We have three basic trails that we groom consistently. One is Love Lake that runs um, off of Middle Creek Road. You can access it on, on Middle Creek Road past Sourd's Ranch. It's a great um, half day family trail. It follows a existing forest service road up into Copper Creek Basin. It's got a lot of great meadows and play areas, 
but it's also a great one to take newbies, young kids, because it follows the trail all the way into the basin. The other two we do are um, on the very north end of our system. One is uh, Bristlehead, which anybody that's familiar with the San Luis Valley in the upper Rio Grande knows Bristlehead. The trail starts on one, Highway 149 and travels up to the summit of Bristlehead um, Peak. Again, a great, just a, a great trail to, to ride, but it also has, opens up into some great meadows, lots of play areas. And then the other one that we do in that same area on the other side of Highway 149 is Black Mountain. Um, it's relatively new. We've only been doing it for four or five years. It starts at the Continental um, parking lot and circles up to Black Mountain on old logging roads, abandoned logging roads, makes a loop and comes back down behind Continental Ranch and back into the Video parking lot. Need to make the on really great, great snow years, um, which we have been few and far between the last three or four, we do also groom from Spring Creek Pass up across um, uh, Snow Mesa and Willow Creek and drop back down onto the Bristol Head Trail. But because of the exposure to wind, that trail is often the very last if it ever gets groomed at all because it can get wind scoured pretty easily and it's very difficult to groom and even more difficult to ride. Our trail conditions are posted on the CSA website, which I've just now put in the chat. You can go into that website and click on trail conditions and the map comes up with a bunch of snowflakes and the snowflakes denote the 27 programs that are in the state of Colorado. You can pick the snowflakes for South Fork or Creed or Lake City or Pagosa and get maps of the trails as well as um, grooming conditions. Those conditions are generally updated weekly, if not more often, depending on snow fall, but we are required to do it weekly. And just one more, um, tidbit about these grooming programs, the money that, that pays for the, the equipment and the fuel and the insurance and the maintenance and repair, and occasionally an operator, if there's a paid operator in a program, is taken from the Colorado State Snowmobile Program, which is funded by snowmobile registrations. And the trails are all winter use trails. There are no snowmobile only trails any place in the state of Colorado. All trails are open to all winter uses. It's just the snowmobile clubs groom them, but they groom them for winter use. And the groom width is anywhere. I think Kurtz, he can speak to it better. I think his are, are 10 feet wide. And there are some areas in the state that groom up to 14 and 16 feet wide. So there's a lot of play area. I think what our, sets ours apart is between our trails on the upper end of our system and Lake City's trails. You can ride all day and pretty much never see the same area twice. So it's a great way to spend a day on the trails, riding, skiing, hiking, whatever. Thank you, Janelle. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, and I should say that all of our trails are on our, our by special use permit on the Rio Grande National Forest. We only groom what is permitted to groom. Thank you. If anyone has any other questions too, they can always pop them in the chat and we'll get them to Janelle. Um, I think our last uh, speaker joining us is Curtis Miller and he's with the South Fork Powder Busters Club. If you wanna share a little bit about what you do. Thank you. And yes, I'm Curtis Miller. I'm the president of the South Fork Powder Busters Snowmobile Club, normally just called the Powder Busters. Um, the Powder Busters has been in existence since 1988. 
Um, basically, they were started out to with the purpose of to groom trails, and uh, over the years, uh, that's developed beyond what I should have done, but uh, that's my own fault. So at this point, we're grooming 150 miles of snowbill trails, and you'll hear me say snowbill trails a lot of times, but again, they are multi-use trails. Everybody's welcome to use them. The only one clarification I would point out is once we close the trailheads where we're grooming the trails, no wheeled vehicles. And normally there's a sign that states that. And every year there's somebody that decides to drive over the berm, which is fine because I normally make $500 to $1,000 to pull their vehicle out. So anyway, if you know anyone that's silly enough to drive over a five and six foot berm, remind them it's not a good idea. It's very expensive. Um, the uh, trails we're grooming, uh, we have five trailheads. Um, Willow Park uh, is one of the trailheads right here in South Fork. Uh, the next trailhead would be Beaver Reservoir, which again leaves from South Fork. You have to drive up to Beaver Reservoir about seven miles. Um, probably the more popular trailheads are up on Wolf Creek Pass. Uh, the most popular one is Tucker Ponds. Uh, normally that's mainly the extreme riders that think they all need to go there. And um, the next one is Park Creek. And again, it gets a lot of extreme riders like to ride that area. Um, the other trail up there, our trailhead is of course Big Meadows. And um, we groom that. That is kind of a low priority trail for us. Um, as far as for the snowmobilers, the, it's not really great snowmobiling. And uh, the only reason we really groom it for the snowmobilers is for the people that like to go ice fishing so that they can get further up there. So uh, that, uh, like I said, we, I used to do a pretty good job keeping that groomed um, as the other trails have become extremely busy. Sometimes that's definitely not my priority. And unfortunately I have to move the snowcat from one trailhead to, uh, to get up there. And, uh, CDOT doesn't like wide loads much anymore if there's three snowflakes in the air. So a lot of times when I want to go groom that, um, there's this nice flashing sign here in town that says no wide loads, which prevents me from getting up there. Um, we also do help groom the ski trail with the San Juan Nordic Club up there. Um, so I try to help them out as much as we can. And uh, last year I wasn't much help, but I'm gonna do better this year. And uh, Currently, we have about uh, 70 miles of trails groomed as of today, and uh, which we're kind of behind just because the snow is nice and deep up high, but the first five to seven miles, a lot of these trails, I really wasn't, didn't know that I could groom three inches of snow and make a trail. So far, it's working. But uh, that's been the tough thing is there is good snow up high, but uh, down low, like I said, a lot of the trails, it's blown off. Um, uh, the one out of Willow Park, when you go around 345, uh, you can drive about 12 miles up there right now with hardly any snow because it's all blown off. So hopefully we get some more snow down low that actually stays would be helpful. Um, I guess that's about what I intended to cover. Um, if they have any questions, I'll be happy to deal with those. Yeah, it looks like Skip's got a question. It, if someone was interested in uh, volunteering or grooming, learning kind of the same time, uh, how would you go about that? I live here in South Fork across from Willow Park. You need to contact me and I can give you a full rundown of what it takes in order to be trained as a groomer. Okay. Yep. Appreciate it. Groomed a little bit a long time ago and ran equipment here and there, but at some point it sounds like a, a fun thing to do. So um, is there a, how would contact, what's the best way? Um, I'll just give you. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Feel free to pop them in the chat too if you have any. Price is uh, working on that, folks. I'll jump in and, and talk just a moment about that multiple use thing. And Bryce, just start talking when you think you're ready. 
Okay. Uh, smile doesn't work for, for us yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, there you are. Okay. Well, good. You're probably going to cover what I was hoping to. So it's all yours. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I better talk fast before my computer changes my settings again. And uh, you won't be able to hear me. So um, another partner that can join us was um, Rick with the South Fork Nordic Club. He groomed um, some Nordic trails in the area and um, over on the south side of Highway 160, just west of um, uh, South Fork over there is uh, a fun uh, skate trail on Forest Service land. Another partner um, is the Wolf Creek Ski Area. They are located on Forest Service managed land and are operating underneath a, a special use permit. Um, it's a 1,500 um, acre ski area. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have been there, heard about it. Um, they're having a pretty good snow season so far. Um, they've been battling a weak layer, but with the amount of traffic they've been getting, um, they've been seeing a lot of stabilization and um, they're, they're hoping to get some more snow and um, some more skiers between um, Christmas and New Year's to really pack everything down so that they're not um, uh, looking at slides going down to the ground. Um, and let's see, with, with the game so close to the holidays, um, the, typically their busiest time up there is between Christmas and New Year's. Um, they're anticipating about 3,000 guests um, starting next week. And then in the month of March, um, during spring break, um, they're really busy as well. But they do offer local appreciation days. Um, it's a discounted lift ticket and everyone's a local. So if you're looking um, for a cheap, li cheap lift ticket and awesome snow, um, I'd recommend heading over to their site um, and seeing when it, when those dates are. Um, let's see, the most recent ones were December 5th through the 8th, and then can't remember if they've got any in January, but typically they, they land uh, midweek. Uh, let's see. Then Wolf Creek Ski Area, it's, it's a winter operation. They don't offer um, summer uh, recreation opportunities. So they're, they're focused on powder. And um, I think someone already mentioned that they also groom a Nordic track over there as well. So um, uh, yeah, if, if you're looking um, for skiing inbound, um, I'd certainly recommend checking out Wolf Creek Ski Area. Um, if you're looking for backcountry opportunities, um, you can um, head over to like the Lobo or Treasure Mountain side of the pass. Um, that, that's a common place, but um, you know, be sure to check CIC's website, go with a partner, um, take a, a beacon shovel and probe with you. And I want to say that, um, see, Avi danger right now is considerable um, in our area. So. Yeah, they, thanks for adding the ski area website, Greg. Um, let's see. And then at the top of the pass, there are, uh, we do have closure orders. Um, the Lobo Road is open to motorized, but um, that is it on the north side of 160. And then obviously the Wolf Creek Ski Area is not op open to uh, motorized recreation. Um, the, those of you in the um, motorized community, if you could kind of help, help spread the word um, that um, it's, it's becoming an issue of snowmobiles going into the ski area, um, I'm sure the ski area would greatly appreciate it. And you know, it, it would be nice if you know, multiple use can um, operate in harmony. Uh, on the top of Wolf Creek Pass. The other closure is um, over to the south of the ski area. It's at the yurt. Um, if you need to see maps, additional information, um, 
reach out to the Divide Ranger District. Um, it's located on our website uh, and we do have it posted at kiosk as well. Um, let's see, does anyone have any questions? All right. Um, so, and then as other closure orders, um, starting December 1st, um, we, we do close um, silver roads as well. Um, and a lot of those are for, uh, so that we can um, groom trails or you know, groom roads. So that's, that's another closure order to, to be aware of um, to protect and support um, winter recreation. Looks like we had a question from Jeff. Um, if the Forest Service Road um, beyond Big Meadows towards Shaw Reservoir is still washed out, that did get fixed this fall. Um, so that is um, was drivable this fall and um, would be snowmobileable as well. That gate, um, as far as I know, is open. Um, the gate at the bottom is uh, closed for grooming, but you can get up there over the snow. All right, and then um, with all these recreation opportunities, I, I'd like to say again that it, it wouldn't be possible with without our um, partners, permittees and, and support because we, we have a small program here on the Divide Ranger District and um, our partners help out in a huge way um, to make everything possible. So having worked for the Forest Service for a couple hundred years now, I, I, one of the things that I, I really want to do is, is support you and when you talk about the not being possible thing, Bryce, with the partnerships. Um, you know, th these are really important for us. They provide opportunities in, in a gamut of recreational activities and you know we've talked already about two of them for wintertime recreation being the snowmobile and uh, cross-country ski grooming and track setting and things like that. Uh, I am aware of another one of the 27 that Janelle talked about over on the San Carlos Ranger District on the wet mountains and uh, having experienced some of those trails up there in, in both cross-country skiing and snowmobile use, I'm just enamored with the product that they offer us recreational users. Uh, I, I think it's absolutely fabulous that they're able to do that. Cottonwood Pass is another place where one of our grooming uh, partners participates as well that I've experienced. And uh, I'd, I'd like to ask our, our partners, um, is there any kind of um, support that you're getting from the state, the feds to get your grooming equipment, uh, that sort of thing? Or is, is this all, you know, your membership donations, et cetera? I'll field that one. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I sit as currently as the chair of the Colorado State Trails Committee, which is a subcommittee of the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Commission. And our primary purpose in existence is um, determining and distributing funding to all trail opportunities in the state of Colorado, both motorized and non-motorized. The two motorized programs, snowmobile and OHB programs are self-funded. And um, in the snowmobile program specifically, there are two buckets of money one is a competitive grant program for things like equipment, um, maintenance, uh, major maintenance of the equipment, like new sets of tracks, or if someone has lost an engine, um, getting that repaired. The second, and, and, and if there is funds left, which there has been, and I'll speak to it most specifically because two years ago we were able to do this, some of that money can also be used for trailhead improvements. And that fund um, put money towards the construction of extended parking at Tucker Ponds to buy the aggregate. When CDOT gets around to finishing that, the aggregate has been 
bought and paid for and is ready to be put on that parking lot through that fund. The second bucket of money is the grooming bucket of money. And this money is allocated to each of the 27 programs based on a formula that, can, that has as factors in that formula, the number of miles they groom um, and the type of usage that they experience. And, and to give you a great disparity of use, Curtis is a top level club because of the use that he's, his trails see in, in Tucker Ponds and Park Creek. Creed is a low end club because we're still a well kept secret and, and we don't get the trails hit as hard as the ones around Southport do. So the, the money is allocated based on miles and usage. And then during the snowmobile season, the clubs bill the state program on an hourly basis. So they submit a, an invoice to be paid back for the hours that they have groomed. And that money is solely for the upkeep, maintenance, fuel um, of the, the machines. So in some cases, some programs do have operators that are paid. Um, both Curtis's club and our club are completely volunteers. We have no paid operators. Um, we only pay mechanics when um, it's a last resort, <laughs> when they can't figure anything else out. Um, so we, we leverage our money through our volunteer support. Um, the club certainly, um, depending on, on what they do throughout the year, some are uh, do fundraisers and, and support through their um, membership dues and others like us do it through, we, we, we leverage our money through our volunteer support. Um, so we do get help from the state, but the state is not the be all end all. The, the clubs have to be willing to commit money. That money that they get in the grooming pot is designed to set a little bit aside every check so that they have some match money. So when they do go to um, the program, to the competitive grant program, they can match to some extent the grants, the, the funds that are being requested. Curtis was successful in getting a grant last year and will be debuting a new snowcat on the trail this year. Yes? Unfortunately. No. <laughs> It's on order June 1st. You'll be yeah. here. Say. Supply chain things hit us too. Yeah, that was um, a problem, but at least it'll be available for next season. So it's it's a it's a well run and a very efficient program. And the state trails committee and the subcommittee, the snowmobile subcommittee that works on the snowmobile program specifically, um, works very, very hard to make sure that the money is spent wisely and in the right places for the right projects. And I saw a question from Michael about the name of the pot of the money that can be used for trailhead improvements. Um, it's, there's two things, Michael. It depends on what kind of trailhead you're talking about. If it's a motorized trailhead, often, well, I'm not even gonna say often, the snowmobile program, cap, uh, capital program, is asked often to help with trailhead improvements, isn't always able to help with trailhead improvements. The, the non-motorized um, programs goes through the rec trails program, which is another bucket of money in under the auspices of the state trails committee. You can get more information about all three funds of money, the OHB, the, the snowmobile and the rec trails program on the CPW website. Thank you. And then a little background on how the San Juan Nordic Club 
finances work is we've actually gotten successfully gotten two state grants, one in 2002 and one in 2012 that helped purchase two of our three pieces of grooming equipment. And we've gotten some additional funds from, and some of those grants actually came from uh, Washington, D.C. with uh, highway transportation passed through something to the state. And then we've also gotten some funds from the counties on some of their, Janelle probably knows the name better than me, their recreation trust fund dollars or whatever it's called. Uh, Conservation then, trust. Conservation yes. trust funds. That stuff. And then uh, the other, uh, so our dues cover the basic grooming expenses. And so when I say that, that's the cost of the gas and mileage reimbursement for the groomers. Uh, but any long-term maintenance and additional purchasing of uh, equipment comes from additional donations or fundraising efforts, such as our ski swap we do. Um, Janelle, I just wanted to ask about that funding that you were talking about. I know we've run in, in the past. I've only been president for a couple of years, so a lot of the fundraising and grant writing was done before me. Actually, all of it was done before me. Um, but our, just to clarify, do you know with the non-motorized funding, through that trails organization. I know in the past there's there's grants we can't apply for because they won't allow us to purchase equipment, which is really, you know, those are the big ticket items that we need. Um, yeah, do you know if there's any limitations that way for non-motorized funding through that? Through the road trails program, there's not a limit on equipment. Okay, cool. I will tell you that just uh, this is a this is a general statement not to be taken as a discouragement at all um but they they often are hesitant to grant money for equipment operation or for equipment purchase because of the concern of the equipment operation and the sustainability of that piece of equipment. So I highly recommend that if you make an application to the Rec Trails program for a piece of equipment for a Nordic system, that you um, be very diligent in laying out how that money will be, how the money will be used, how the equipment will be used, and what your plan for maintenance, repair, an ultimate replacement when necessary needs to be. It's just going to make a much stronger application. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I think we had one more question uh, for Kurt. Um, how far do you groom at Big Meadows? Do you go beyond Shaw Reservoir or just up to Big Meadows? How far, when you, when you make it over there, how far do you go? Well, now that the Forest Service has fixed that washed out spot above Shaw, it did take three years, but they did a wonderful job when they repaired it. And they also regraded the road and uh, the road is in excellent shape. I was hunting up there, which was really nice not to have to drive over a bunch of berms that were there because of the fire. Um, anyway, the Forest Service did an excellent job getting that repaired. And now we will be able to groom. We groom to the end of the road. And when I say the end of the road, uh, it, we go past Hunter Lake and the road the, the normal road ends and turns into a, a real Jeep road. So we normally groom to the end. So yes, we groom above Shaw and like I said, above Hunter when I can get there. If anyone has any other questions in general for any of our speakers or about the forest, feel free to shout them out or put them right in the chat. Yeah, John, go for it. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm actually down south of you guys. I'm down on the Santa Fe National Forest. I'm the rec manager there. And we've kind of been discussing uh, possible uh, snowmobile use or some type of uh, winter activities for us here. Uh, I don't know if Bryce, if, would you mind passing me your email so I can maybe pick your brain and talk to you about some of the things you guys do and bring them down to our forest. And then my question would be, what are your guys' requirements as far as Colorado for riding sleds up there? Is there a, a forest service permit? Is there a state permit? What's the requirements for you guys up there? The Colorado Snowmobile Association and Colorado Parks and Wildlife 
have a safety um, class that they encourage all people to take. It's, it's um, targeted towards youngsters that are getting into the sport and people who have never ridden before that, that just it's a, some basic safety skills, some basic riding skills. It's put on by Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Um, I think the law, Kurt, you need to help me with this. I think the law is 12, 10 or 12 can ride unattended at the age of 10 or 12. I can't remember which. Do you remember, Kurt? I really don't remember what it is. Um, and I'm sure you were going to cover that they have to have the snowmobile sticker from yes. the state of Colorado. Yes, that's the biggie. All sleds have to be registered in Colorado. If you're a resident of Colorado, you can get a, a, a resident sticker. If you're a non-resident and you're bringing a sled in, you can get a visitor's permit. And you can get those either through CPW at a CPW office, or there are some sporting goods stores that will sell the visitor's permit. Thanks, Greg. So yeah, you're welcome, Janelle. You know, um, I, I put that uh, in the um, chat for you, John. Um, that's the site to get to the Colorado State Snowmobile Registration page, which is required to be out uh, if you are operating other than on your private property. So, um, you know, and, and that is something that Forest Service Law Enforcement uh, does help regulate as well. Um, yeah, it's, you know, what is it, $30 nowadays, you guys? I mean, putting 30 bucks to the funds that we were just talking about, I think is an amazing uh, commitment to be able to ride out on public lands. I mean, it, it, I, your investment is, is well, well, well spent. So, um, you know, just, just being somebody to, to put that in, um, you know, a plug in for getting those folks registered. In Colorado, we do require, the state does, I'm, I'm, I've got my real Grand National Forest on, but the state does require that out of state visitors also register their snowmobiles uh, either temporarily or uh, permanently so they can ride when they're here. So like if you guys came up from New Mexico, you'd have to register. Uh, unless you come and ride with Bryson, then you can do it administratively. <laughs> Bryce, more for uh, John? Um, I, I also added my email and work cell phone number in the chat and that goes for anyone. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. You know, one hey, more Anna. thing, John, I, I'd like to, uh, uh, support what Janelle said too. I used to be a CSA instructor, um, because I ran the snowmobile program on the Pike and San Isabel National Forest. And, and I got to tell you, um, the, the educational materials, uh, the training materials they give you are, are wonderful. So if you can get somebody to share those, I, I haven't been in a, a certified with them for about three years now, but uh, they're absolutely wonderful. And, and as Janelle said, uh, highly recommended, not required. I would say uh, try to get it required for uh, kids under 18. It's, it's just fabulous information. Yeah, I think Michael's got something. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Great, my name is Michael Whiting. I live in Pagosa Springs. Um, I've been on the job uh, one week for Wilder, uh, Winter Wildlands Alliance. Um, it's a national group. Um, it's uh, going to be focusing their attention uh, down in our neck of the woods on the Rio Grande and San Juan forests. Um, it's uh, winterwildlands.org if you want to find out what they're about. Um, but uh, my, my, I'm the Colorado uh, policy manager for uh, winter wildlands. Uh, but like I said, their focus in Colorado is going to be our neighborhood down here. And I wanted to introduce myself. I'm a former county commissioner in Archuleta County, two-term county commissioner in Archuleta County. So I'm, and I, I'm a, a trail user. I spend as much time in the Rio Grande 
uh, as I do in the San Juan. Uh, and so um, I'd like to reach out to everybody and just get a lay of the land here, uh, understand the, the different uses that are occurring on the, on the two forests, which are at Wolf Creek Pass, uh, there's hardly a distinction uh, between uh, Rio Grande and San Juan forests. It's such a mix uh, coming and going across the pass. So I'd love to just connect up with uh, with everybody and and uh, really just get a lay of the land. Um, uh, my job is to um, take a look at uh, winter travel uh, in the region and the two forests and um, focus on that. So um, just wanted to say thanks for uh, letting me participate and introduce myself. Um, I'd love to speak with each and every one of you. So if you if you do drop your uh, contact information in the chat, I, I'm, I'm the guy who follows up. So I would love to talk with all of you guys. Um, so thanks for giving me a second to introduce myself. Thank you, and thank you to all our speakers and all of you for joining us. Um, I think we're probably, if you got any more questions, feel free to um, shout out, raise your hand, or pop them in the chat again. Um, if you have any last minute ones, we'll try and get them to um, whoever we think can best answer them as well, if you think of them. Um, you can always contact us here at the Forest Service if you have any other uh, questions about recreation anywhere on the forest in this area. Um, so thanks again for joining us and to our speakers. Um, so. Just a little plug, next year we will be also continuing our Forest Specialist Series program um, in January. We're working on our schedule right now. Um, we're hoping to have another winter themed one um, in January about avalanches, but we're um, working, working the um, logistics out. So keep your, keep your ears tuned. Again, um, send out your email if you're interested um, in being updated. And we'll also have it on our forest website and our Facebook page. Um, and we'll be right back here on Zoom um, again at 5 p.m. in January. So um, we hope to see you there. And finally, our door prize winner this month is Susie Beauchene. Um, so I've been in touch with you. Congratulations on uh, winning this month's prize. Um, and we hope you all have a good e evening and enjoy the holidays. <laughs>